everybody, welcome back to the channel and another episode of Inheritance. Now this will be the last episode. I haven't recorded in a long time, like three weeks or something. I've kind of been away, um, but this will be the last episode. Um, I'm meant to get back into this, into Royals and into the Duelist, but apparently the new version of Rogue Tech will be um, negating old saves. So I figured since I'm starting to get back into things, I might as well end these series off. Now, this episode and the last episode of the Royals and the last episode of the Duelist, uh, for some reason, my uh, recording software was recording my headset mic, which is not plugged in, and was not recording my USB mic, which is the one I use to record with. For So for the next three episodes, I'm going to be doing voiceover for, the, <laughs> for what's going on. So, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting because I've never really done that before. I mean, I kind of did once or twice before, but uh, not very often. But um, so basically all I'm doing is I'm playing the episode of my editing software and then uh, and, um, you know, doing a voiceover. But uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, the reason why I've kind of been away for the past three weeks or so, I'm going to basically just chalk it up to something I guess you could call it uh, psychological reasons but I mean it's not it's a really horrible term to say it that way it's like I'm not like I'm suicidal or like you know depressed or any of that kind of stuff I'm just trying to figure out um who I am kind of as a as a person I guess is the best way to put it I mean it's it's a horrible way to say things but I'm just kind of trying to figure stuff out um so yeah that being said let's just get into the videos and play because like that's why I'm here. But anyway, so uh, for this particular mission, I was going to bring the Orion. Um, I already know which one we're doing. I was going to bring the Orion. We had outfitted it with a pair of mortar eights and a pair of large lasers. But I think for this mission, because it's going to be a four and a half skull mission versus Comstar, I think I'm going to bring the Holopolis instead. Uh, only because the Holopolis has got the um, AMS Mark II as opposed to um, uh, just like um, the indirect fire support. Um, and I think we need, I think we're at four and a half skulls, we're probably gonna need the AMS. So that's the reason why I went with the Holopolis in this particular video. Um, now I think uh, there's was one minor change, I think. Oh yeah, the, the Talos. So we got the Talos back and the Talos, uh, we lost the Ultra 5 in the one arm, and we had lost um, the Thunderbolt 10. So when I rebuilt this thing, I decided to do it a little bit differently. Uh, I threw in the Clan Rack 5 we had, um, and a, a, a double ton of ammo, so it's got like 75 shots, which is plenty. And then uh, I pulled out the SRM 4 we had in the right torso, replaced it with an MRM 10. And I put another MRM 10 where the old Thunderbolt 10 used to be. And then added a pair of half tons of ammo, because that's all I had. I had like Inferno ammo, regular ammo, and we already had acid ammo in there. So we've got, you know, four turns of firing of each. Um, so that's 12 turns of firing for the for the three MRMs. That's plenty, I think. I was able to squeak a tag into the left arm. And in the head, what I did was I removed the... Um, the compact uh, life support, because that was one of those things where if the if I, I can't remember if the if the head get, takes a hit or something, the pilot takes damage or something like that. I can't remember what what the effect of that was, but we didn't need the extra weight that that was giving us, like it was one ton or something. So I pulled that out just to to help out a little bit, and then the the rest of it just kind of remained the same. Nothing else changed on that mech. So in the uh, command center, in the mission selections, I wanted to take um, a five skull blackout mission against um, Word of Blake. So I thought that would have been a good ending mission, but then I realized that the, the five skull uh, mission, I can only drop six units in total with a maximum of 400 tons. So I decided against that. And instead we kind of went up and we took a um, four and a half skull against Comstar. I wanted to make sure we would, our last mission was for Rassel Hag, so that's why I took this one. Um, and I figured, you know, it's a four and a half skull, it should be a really good fight. It's going to be a tough fight because it's technically against an elite lance. Now, I wasn't sure if this elite lance was going to have um, an extra lance with it. 
but because of um, the updates that we did in the mech band stuff, we were able to drop six mechs and three vehicles. So I basically just um, loaded up with what we normally have, um, left the Orion behind, um, but loaded up with our normal loadout and then just dropped. Upon dropping, I also chose our start location, decided to choose uh, the, the drop behind a hill here so that hopefully um, we're at least out of direct line of sight of the enemy. The other option was to, to spawn on a hill opposite them, which we don't really have a lot of long range mechs. We do have a few, but we have a lot of close rangers as well. So um, I would rather um, drop in this location to give us some direct fire protection if they do have 12 units. So I wasn't really sure if they did or not. Uh, at first I thought those white chevrons were the enemy and that they did have an extra lance because you know, you know me, I'm kind of like, um, you know, kind of blind sometimes. But uh, the first thing that we encountered, this was this Afrit that I was kind of worried about, had like triple MRM tents, had a bunch of bomb racks and stuff. So uh, we're at a point where it's like, yeah, we got to like shoot this thing down. So that was the first target that we went for. Um, yeah, I'm just clicking off my SRMs here just because I was like, I didn't want to waste the ammo. I wasn't sure what we were going to be up against still at this point. And of course, the uh, lasers missed at that range. It's not, uh, you know, wasn't expecting them to hit or anything. Waiting for the enemy to move here. It was bizarre because we spotted a hunchback early on, which looked like the 1G or something. So I was like, why would they have such a crappy a unit if this is supposed to be an elite lance? But I find out soon enough. Um, moving the Wolverine up here. Moving to position. Just gonna take a pot shot at this guy again with the lasers. Once again, garbage chances to hit. You never know, right? Like, first turn's always crap, and against aircraft, it's always even worse, right? So, Target especially the against target. VTOLs. I've always had bad luck about getting half decent targeting against VTOLs early. Which goes to, I mean, it goes to show that having like, like even the Cloudbuster with flak ammo, but weapons that are able to, or weapons or weapon platforms, like the, the uh, Orion would have been perfect here with the large lasers because it has anti-air targeting. So, so in this case we're moving the Cephalus up and once again I don't know what we're up against so I'm going to put Phantom Mech on. I've been forgetting to do this in past episodes but this time I didn't forget because I knew that uh, moving it up like this could put it in a really, har like a massive harm's way. I, like once again, once I was still going on to the assumption that they had 12 units at this point. Good to go. Um, for it's been a while. Okay, cut, cut me some slack. I thought the white chevrons were theirs, not not ours. So but anyway, we pick up a uh, uh, A11 lightning bolt here with a heavy PPC and stuff. So I'm like, and bomb racks, of course. But I think I decide to stay on the uh, the Efreet because it's the closest. Yeah, because I can't really hit it here. I can hit it with the tag, but that's not really going to help me that much. I mean, it hasn't moved yet, but really we want to shoot this guy down because it had so many bomb racks, right? Had bomb infernos and a bunch of other... I know there's more down below there. I was worried about fast scam more than anything because I've been bagged a few times where the aircraft will fly in and hit a, your, your clump of mechs like right at the very beginning with fast scam. And then everyone's got to move through it. So I was worried about that, right? So I'm just trying to get everybody as far along here as I can. Coordinates received. And spread them out as much as I can. So we're gonna get a chance to use the rack and the MRMs. So I'm gonna stick with the acid ammo on this one, I think, because I want to increase any damage that anybody else does against this thing. Now, I know it's got an AMS Mark II, but with MRMs, because they're like really unguided, uh, you have a better chance to get through the AMS than you do if you're using like LRMs or SRMs or stuff. Even rockets are better, right? You have a better chance to get through. Once again, doing the uh, psychological tag. I know it doesn't matter to move it to the top, but it's just psychological for me. All right, 18 hits, or 18, yeah, 18 AMS hits. So a few of them got through, a few of the uh, missiles got Waiting through. For which is not bad. All right, we gotta get the uh, rattlesnake up here. Once again, just gonna move it up and take shots with the lasers. Kind of a little bit nervous of getting it out in the open like that. 
Because depending on what the enemy is, if they target the Rattlesnake or the Cephalus even, like we don't have a lot of evasion. It could do some significant damage, but once again, it's a fast newer, so I want to get it out in the open. Get it down with the Cephalus down the hill. So hopefully that the, the units that I'm detecting there on the right, you can't get a direct line of sight on it. I may need some My more goal, I think, still at this point was to try and get um, as many fast mechs down that hill to get them around behind the enemy. Plus, I'm trying to detect, at this point, what I think is a whole other lance. Right, I want to get as many as much like, uh, sight as I can. Moving the Holopolis in, going to take a shot at this guy. Once again, I want to pr try and pull this Afrit down on turn one. I don't want his bombs to go off. Switching out of the Artemis was a choice. Artemis had a better chance to hit, but because it's the Artemis gets locks on, the AMS has a better chance to shoot it down. So I figured going with follow the leader. I know the first missile needs to hit, but at least they won't have a, a better chance to shoot it down. I'm not thinking that the AMS could have been jammed at this point. I think it was actually. All right, we're moving up the, uh, the joust here once again. Fast mover, trying to get it as far forward as I can. Also trying to spread things out a bit. I don't want to put it too far oh forward. Boy, here we go. I mean, it's hard because I can't... The joust and the other... I got other vehicles are mostly hover, with the exception of... Um, no, I think they're all hover. Yeah, so his AMS is done, but we're not able to hit him here. Yeah, you did. Me. So yeah, we're just trying Take to get a, uh, a bead on this guy. So that's when I first noticed the, the, the uh, Thumbzilla. And I'm like, what the fuck is this thing? And I looked at it, it's like four ballistic and an energy. And I'm like, is that like four thumpers? Well, we'll find out in a minute. I was like, yeah, that can't be four thumpers. And we got a pair of hunchbacks here, a 4X and then the other one. So that guy's got the, um, the 4X has got the uh, light uh, uh, AC-20. The other guy just has the regular AC-20. So it's a pair of AC-20s that I gotta worry about now. I thought for an, uh, an elite lance, especially with Comstar, you'd figure that they would have more advanced, um, more advanced uh, hunchbacks, but in this case they didn't. So we got a pair of flak AC-5s firing at this guy. Still not great a chance to hit, but you do land one shot, I think. Yeah, we did. Got lethal. Ultra 20 moving up. Now I'm just, I don't want to take a shot with the Ultra 20. I kind of do and I kind of don't, but I got to get this thing moving because if this guy decides to drop bombs, I don't want it to be stuck too far back because then I got to drive through a whole bunch of them. Now I know hover takes a lot less, I think, from fast cam because it, for the most part it's going over, like it's driving over top of them. I'm just trying to figure out what the chance to hit would be moving up here. But I think I try to move as far as I can. Once again, worrying about this guy, if we don't take him down this turn, he's probably going to go before us next Roger, turn. Meaning those bomb, he's going to lose those bomb racks on us, right? And we're, we're clustered. So if he does decide to drop fast cam, I want to be as far out of that long range valley as I can. Because he's going to probably hit the max up front, which means all of my other guys got to go through. Because going up the side of that hill is going to be a nightmare. And my vehicles can't because they're hovered. They won't go up or down the hill. I got to use the road. So that was my goal there. Now here's the uh, Marauder coming forward. Confirmed. So this is the Goss 2 ER Large. And thank goodness this thing is like... This is about the best it does in this whole match. Because it doesn't get really a chance to do too much. But there we go. We managed to kill it. We land the Goss Strike and Laser Strikes and it's down in one shot. Probably a rotor hit most likely. Blew the rotor off it. Even though it doesn't really have a rotor. And there's the Thumperzilla, and yes, that is in fact four Thumpers. And yes, that is in fact a very scary mech, and you will see how scary it gets <laughs> as we progress. Thank goodness they only had one Lance, because if it was two Lances, I mean look at that. That's like, that's not good news, right? Alright, so we got the Archer here moving up. We're going to take a shot at this other uh, aircraft, the Lightning. The heavy PPC could be particularly nasty, right? So we gotta try and take it down. Now this thing didn't move this turn for some reason. Uh, or wait, do I take a shot? I can't remember if I take a shot at it or do I go... I may, I may lay thunder on this guy, I can't remember now. I think it was thunder, I think we lay on this guy. 
Yeah, I think we dropped thunder on him. The first turn, I'm, I think I, I decide because I, I'm like, he, I don't, I don't think he's going to be that hot with the four thumpers. At first, I thought maybe dropping incendiary might be the way to go, but then I'm like, no, nah, I think what I'll do is I'll drop some thumper because it's going to help with his legs overall. And then if there's other mechs and stuff down there that I haven't, because I haven't seen at least one unit, right? We spot five. Right now, they should have six because it says destroyed Comstar units 17%. So there should be five others. Yeah, I just I think I'm laughing at this thing at this point because it's like it's it's just going to be insanity. So I'm thinking about maybe trying to shoot that down. Then I'm like, nah. There's the hunchbacks, and I think we just drop some thunder on this guy. That's what we do. Now, remember there was that uh, yellow. Um, Energy, yeah, it's a laser AMS. Reporting so it shot it shot down a lot of the thunder rounds, not all of them. You'll see when we move up a little bit that there's a few of them that that were that did did land around it, but not right anywhere near it. So yeah, that I was like, yeah, look, there. This is when I realized I think it's us that I'm like, oh wait, this is ours, not theirs. <laughs> I start realizing that we have the we have the numerical advantage, right? We have the two to one advantage. I thought it was going to be 50-50, but. No, we got 11 guys. They got they've got five now, so we got two to one. I'm just moving up my uh, my talus. I was joking earlier that oh, the rack five shouldn't jam because we got the uh, upper recoil of my pilot. There's only a 10 percent chance for this thing to jam if we're firing five rounds. Of course, it jams on turn one. Roger. I just move up and fire the MRMs at this guy. Still using acid at this point. I plan to use the acid as the first shot on any new unit that I was firing at. So because the helicopter was there, I just used the acid again to give anybody else that's shooting afterwards increased damage. Good to go. Acid's great for stripping armor, um, but it doesn't do very good versus internals, so it's good to like apply it and then give people like a damage increase. Yeah, we're all pretty hot at this point because of that Thumpzilla. But we can still fire our weapons. I mean, most of our guys, like we're in the snow biome too, right? So it's a lot easier for us. Not a bad chance to hit. Both land. Good damage. Now this guy didn't move this turn for some reason. I don't know why. He had definitely I'm had the initiative and he just sat there. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal was with that. Moving the Wolverine up here. I think we got I think we can fire everything. I can't remember if we fire it all or if we leave off the large. Now we're able to fire everything, I think. Yeah, this thing runs pretty damn cool because the two chem lasers don't use any heat at all, right? I think I throw the rockets on too. I'm like, should, do I go for the try and get the kill on this guy with this turn? I think I throw the rockets on here to try and get some extra damage in. Yeah, we hit with two, the two chem lasers and then some of the rockets finish it off, I think. But it goes down pretty quick. They're, now they're down to four, so we're at about three to one odds for us. That's the kill. That Thumpzilla, though, Out of SRM. or Thumpila, Thumperila, whatever the hell it's called, is still a threat at this point. Because I can't see it directly from with any of my mechs. It's down the hill. So it's it's you. got indirect rain of fire on us right now. So now we're going to take this left hunchback. It really is the logical choice at this point. And, I mean, it does have an AC-20, so we got to kind of move up and paste it as fast as possible and get it out of the way. Got it. That's going to clear the line directly towards where that their Thumbzilla is. And keep in mind, we still haven't seen one of their mechs yet, right? So I have no idea what, what's up ahead. Is it a mech? Is it aircraft? What is it? It's definitely something stealth, right? Like something's got to be stealth back there. So, and once again, because it's four and a half skull, um, just to, trying to decide whether we go standard or not, ammo. I'm just going for damage at this point because I don't think... Inferno is not really going to do much against this Hunchback in the cold. Hunchbacks are pretty cool running. Yes, going to get the Cephalus up. we got one more turn of of, um, of uh, Phantom Mech on this thing, which gives us bonus ECM and bonus evasion. So I'm just going to push this Hunchback because I'm trying to find to get a sensor lock on the next unit. Cephalus is down the hill enough that it's only the Hunchback that can see us at this point. But we still haven't detected anything, so it's something that's heavily stealth, right? Not bad hits. Stripping a bit of armor. 
We're gonna get Sturm up here. Ready get the Goss at ERs and if we can get going on this thing. Once again, we're overheating and this I thing does not do yeah. well with uh, heat issues. It just moves real slow. I think we turn off. Well, we fire everything, sorry. I was gonna say I thought we turned off the ERLR just to increase our movement next turn, but I think we're trying to front load damage on this guy, so let's just sense his dropping. Alright, we want to get the Holopolis up with the AMS yeah, to make up. sure that it's uh, covering most of our guys. We can't get the Cephalus in this one, but we can get pretty much everybody, including the Rattlesnake that's partially down the hill. Just trying to decide what I want, whether I want to try and burrow through the one side or shoot him from the front again. I want the burrow option. I can't do a lot of damage with this thing, but it's not bad. I think I switched off to follow the leader. I left it on there for a second, but I switched it off. And I can't shift click that because it's the clan LRMs and regular LRMs, so you have to kind of like click each one individually. And we got really good hits on this guy. That's a fair bit of damage. Got some structure exposure. I think that was a torso exposure. Because I think at some point we strip his arm or his uh, ammo, but I can't remember. Bringing up the Ultra 20. I want to get this guy as far forward. My goal with the Ultra 20 is to try and attack that uh, the uh, thump the thump thumpila back there. We missed. Good. Oh, yeah, 80 damage versus rock. There's, there's like none of our guys took damage there. It just said 80, but yeah, we didn't hit anybody. I think we hit the actual uh, vehicle on the ground. Here's the Thumbzilla again. Now you're going to see the fall to this guy. Right here. I'm and he sure falls over. So I think damage. the Thumpers, I'm pretty sure the Thumpers have a 25% chance for instability if you move during the turn right and you didn't brace the turn before. So some of these newer, like bigger weapons, like even the heavy Gosses, require you to move and brace and not fire and then fire because if you don't do it that way you incur an incremental 25 percent chance of being knocked over so he's firing four of them which i think gives him a hundred percent chance of being knocked on his ass so i'm not exactly sure why he's moving the first turn i think he ended up okay because technically i think he was braced um i guess it considers him braced on turn zero so on turn one, when he moved, I think it, it didn't give him a chance to knock him over, but there's the uh, loadout right there. Bolt-on AMS, uh, integrated laser AMS, and four thumpers. And it maxed armor. Like, the armor is, like, insane, too, right? So it's like, there's the laser AMS going off. And I'm sure it's got a double heat sink kit, so it runs cool, and... I never did get a chance to check out what it what it did have on it fully, but uh, I'm sure it's pretty nasty. I mean, you can look it up online, I'm sure, but trying to get the vehicles up for a little closer, trying to get them out of like the uh, artillery spread. I know he's going to be targeting mechs again, but just trying to move forward to try and stop him from shooting at uh, or getting our vehicles in the crossfire. Ready for orders. So the archer, I think we just sit still here, and we I think we rain. I think we dropped Thunder. I think this is where I got wise. Rather than shooting straight at him, I think I target the ground beside him. Because, like I said, once again, I don't know. There's something stealth somewhere. I have no idea where it is. Most likely it's back near the Thumper somewhere. But I'm thinking, if this guy's going to get up and move around, I might as well apply some mines to the ground. So I think we target the ground right next to him. We, we fire. Yeah, we fire a full load. Now his AMS goes off, but it's not going to shoot, it only shoots down the ones that are going to hit him, right? It doesn't shoot down all the other missiles, so anything that targets him. So I think it, it probably shot down three or four. This is where we push with the Cephalus here. I can't use Phantom Mech for another turn, unfortunately, but I decided we've got to move in. i got to find out what this other mech is. And we see a little, um, I'm trying to find out. Uh, the purple targeting looks like there's something interfering with my line of sight. I can't remember if the purple is like, you know, I can't get a line of sight on them there. Oh, wait, is that the red line? I'm looking for a red line of sight, which is right there. 
So that's what I do as I move up. And this is where I think we encounter the, uh, yeah. There's the vulture mark too. So I'm like, oh shit. That thing's gonna be nasty. But I still go after this thumbzilla. I'm looking for headshots here. I want to try and plank the pilot. And I go with everything here, hoping to get a plank on him somewhere. Uh, a lot of those rockets land, you don't get a headshot. Once again, rockets are good even if they have AMS. You only got one hit. We're close enough that the AMS is not going to target them that well, but because they're rockets um, and they're like fire and forget, there's no real targeting on them, so it's harder for the AMS to predict which, where, their, where their travel path is. So they hit more. Just checking the damage here where I'm hitting, and of course I hit the far side rather than the side closest to me, but no head hits. Got to get Griff up here. Once again, we're going to work on this... Uh, going to work on this um, hunchback. I don't want to move myself too far forward because I don't want that second hunchback to get a, get a shot at me, but I am turning my main torso more towards him. Just in Go case that guy, guy does come back and take a shot at me, he's hitting me from the front and not the side. Deciding whether I want to use the thumper one shot in that guy or not. But I think we decide to shoot him instead. I think we have to turn some stuff off here too. Or no, we fired it all. Never mind. I think we're just trying for the kill at this point. With that hunchback 4G out of the way, it, it frees up the entire left side. More where that came from. Right? He's in a he's still in a position to I mean he, he can't kill anybody with one aye, shot. Aye. I mean he possibly could, but we're kind of in that situation. Now I'm moving the Wolverine in here because we've got damage reduction on this thing. And it's pretty sturdy. So if that other hunchback wants to fire, I would rather have him fire at the Wolverine rather than my other guys. So I'm just deciding who I want to go after here garbage chances on this guy. I figured if I tagged him he would come after me, but I think we fire at this hunchback here. Yeah. Leave the remote sensors off, we just fire at him. Copy that. Didn't get much, got the left arm. We miss with most of the lasers. Score to critical hit. You know the sad part of me having to narrate narrate this, so I gotta go do two more after this one. <laughs> It's like, it's, it's fun when you're playing it because you like you know what like you don't know what's going on. But now I already know what's going on. He missed that one, fortunately, but he fired through all my guys too. So you're gonna hit anybody? I got really lucky with that AC hit. That's why I'm trying to kill him, right? Like he's in a position to do some damage against somebody. So I want him down now. This guy I think turns around. Yeah, he turns around, comes back, and takes a shot here. Does fire at the Wolverine, which is what I wanted him to do. He's got a pair of X pulses and a and a, uh, and a light um, AC hit. twenty, which only does eighty damage, but still, it's like that's a hefty amount, right? Wolverine can take the shot. It's a fifty-five tonner, full armor, plus it's got the ten percent reduction, so it's pretty good. Just trying to decide now where I want to get my rotary. Decide to go up the hill. This talus isn't very fast. If I want the rotary in play, I got to go up the hill. Right, because I want to try and get a bead on that Raxilla too, right? So now I'm just switching up my ammo here. He's taking some damage, so I'm just going to go with some standard ammo here. If we can get that torso, we can get his ammo. I think I dialed the rack back because I want to try to avoid getting jammed, but I think I get jammed anyway. It's only like, the recoil goes up. Like my pilot, I think, has got two recoil reduction. And I got one for the arm mount, Commander? so it's three. It, it's plus one recoil over four shots, I think, or over three shots or something. But it's not the recoil that I'm worried about. I'm bringing the rattlesnake in to hopefully finish off that uh, hunchback. Right, Commander. Yeah, I think we just go right after this guy. I meant to respec her too, because she's still got the uh, the melee right, mech Commander. skills. That's how we bought her. Unfortunately, I was I completely forgot to respec her. I wanted to spec her like the uh, um, pilot Nicephalus. Okay, we're bringing this vehicle in. Hiding from the hunchback, and take a shot at the other one. Once again, I'm trying to get the my vehicle as as far forward as I can. Because I know the, the next Thumpzilla artillery rounds are going to come down at the end of the turn. The fact that he's on his back, I can't see him, right? Like, he's so low. 
And he's got the AMSs, and I think the Vulture's got an AMS as well. Yeah, this is where I start to worry here. Not a lot of damage, but there's a potential for damage, right? That thing's not as scary as the Vulture that we had a few seasons ago. A few uh, series ago. Ours was brutal. I think we had a pair, we have a pair of LRM-20s. And I think I had, what did I have under the chin, on the chin mount? I think we had like two, is it two ER larges and, or was it one ER large? Or did I have a rotary? I think I had a rotary on the, a rotary five on the chin. I can't remember now, I don't remember, it was just brutal. There goes the hunchback. I think we took the leg out. Um, the damage transferred to the CT and killed him. I was hoping to get a CT hit on that, I think, but I think it was a leg hit that just the damage just transferred straight to the CT. Trying to get my Marauder forward. It just doesn't have the ability to move, so I think we just... I don't remember. If, I think we fired the Thunderbolt. I think we take a pot shot at this guy. Just to see if the missile will go through. But I think they shoot it down. Pretty sure they do. Let me go for a torso shot here. Yeah, they shot it down. Take it was the uh, vulture that shot it down. I mean, the bonus of that too is I'm burning up their no AMS, luck. right? All right. Standing I'm back. trying to get a back shot in this hunchback to end it in one turn. It's a tricky move, though. So if I move like that, the problem is, is that vulture can come around and shoot me in the ass, or the hunchback can back up and shoot me in the ass. So I'm like trying to figure out what the best choice is. Now, we've only got a 23% chance as it shows here with the Ultra. So I'm like, maybe I can get down and get a shot at that Vulture. I'm like, yeah, I can't get all the way down there. Just trying to figure out what the best angling here would be. Like, ultimately, I like to be facing back towards the left. Like, like, like that. That's what I want right there. Right? So even if the Vulture or the Hunchback move, they can't get behind me. But it puts me in a beautiful strike position for next turn. This thing is so fast, right? You generate a lot of evasion. So as long as the enemy's not shooting you from behind, that evasion will stand. That's like six chevrons, right? So now I'm gonna take a, I got great, great chances to hit, but I think I dropped the ultra here. I'm trying to decide between one or two shots, but I think I turn it off because I'm not interested in killing this hunchback with this guy. So I wanna drop my recoil here because I did fire at the turn before. So if I drop my recoil, Right? I'm thinking that I can swing down the road and go after the big boys with the Ultra 20 and have a much better chance to hit. So I'm just firing the machine guns off here. Right? Now the the uh, Archer, I think I don't move him again. I think it just sits right here. I think we, once again, I think we try for, uh, yeah. We're dropping some mines back here. Now that I know the Vulture's back there, I'm trying to lay some mines down so that if it does start moving around back there, Right? It's got to move through minefields continuously. Target they shoot a bunch of them down, but it's still a nice thick minefield that gets laid in there. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. See, we've got a good, nice spread. And we've got enough room on the right-hand side for my vehicles to get down the road. Commander. Which is kind of what I wanted, to be able to still be able to maneuver and get in there. Holopolis has got no movement speed. Moving out. I think I just brace it here. I can't remember. Yeah. We just, at this point, the Holopolis is just an AMS platform. It's just keeping our guys under AMS. So this guy's up, and he's like, fuck it, we're going to go and do it again. <laughs> this is what I didn't want to happen, going against all the light guys at the front. It's like, okay, when it fires, right. it's like thumping, 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 and of course he falls commander. over again. This time the pilot's wounded. Which is a bonus for us because it's to make it harder for him to hit next turn. Standing by. We got the pilot damage. Problem with this ma this matchup is that we only got two salvage, right? Max is like two eleven. Not that it matters because this is the last episode anyway. But right here, I'm just trying to figure out what to do, and I'm going to run this uh, Wolverine right up this guy's nose. I'm trying to get like trying to spread my mechs out and stuff now because I know that Thumperzilla is going to get up next turn, right? Now we got to clear this Hunchback out of the way. Hit him with nothing. Not even the tag. Yep. I think we all saw negative that. Negative damage. Repeat. Negative damage. But I gotta get him out of the way. Once he's gone, then I can really focus on the guys down the hill. We can really spread out. I think it's their, uh... Oh, yeah, the hunchback's going. He's just backing up a bit. He didn't move far enough. 
to really save him, but there's not much he can really do here. I mean, if it was me, I think I would try to go against the Ultra 20. The SM1, I think it would back up and take a shot at that, but they're so badly outnumbered and outgunned at this point, there's not much they can really do. Like I said, I was really hoping for two lances, or at least one lance that was like super, super tough. But now I gotta decide heat wise what I'm gonna do here. Yeah, we're overheating. I think I dropped. Is it? Yeah, I think I dropped one of the X pulses, the, the racks. I think I dropped because it takes le does less damage. And then we fired the rest. I think. They both do. I'm just checking the heat. They both do 20 heat. So, just want to make sure that I'm uh, dropping the right one here. Firing on target. Not a lot of damage. 12 from 12 hit with AMS. Their laser AMS went off again. Now I gotta decide what I want to do with, with her. Are we gonna back out of here or are we gonna move down the hill? I think I decide to stay in the fight. Dropping the uh, the uh, resolve to drop our uh, instability. We're gonna keep her in the fight. We're gonna move down the hill. I think I forget about Phantom Mech at this point too. Yeah, it's fine. We're still pretty good, and we're dividing them now. So now the, the Vulture's got to decide if he's going to turn his back or not. It's a pretty good play. Once again, the Thumb Brazil is on the ground, taking a shot at his head. Don't land it, but Copy that. taking the shot. Protection on him, which is good. We're going to move Granite up the hill. We're going to get that Ultra for the, uh, the rack down on somebody. I think we sprinted up there. I think we're able to get up on top. Yeah, right there. Going after the Hunchback, I think. It's pretty good overwatch position up here, but we once again, there's like that Thumpzilla, Thumpzilla and the uh, the other guy are down the hill, so and my, my rotary's jammed again. Every every time I fire it, it gets jammed, so I'd have to, if I was going to continue with this playthrough, I'd have to figure out how to be better do that. Now, I do have um, in storage, and I mentioned this at the end of the episode when I was, when I first went through it, I do have in storage um, I decided to keep the um, fire control system flak on this guy to to go with evasion ignore, but Hunchback doesn't have any evasion, but in the actual storage I've got a uh, um, fire control system that uh, reduces uh, the chance of jamming by 25%. It's just fire control system jam. That's all it does. So I would most likely swap that out at the end of this match to that one, just so that this rotary wasn't jamming. this guy up a little bit really doesn't make that much difference but just applying a little bit of damage to this guy until we can get the uh, rotary back this is when this guy decides to challenge me it's nice we get a, li we get a little bit of uh, back and forth between these two max the Talos and the uh, vulture Light damage. it's kind of nice I was hoping for a little bit more of that in this match but we never really got it so, good to go. Just gonna move up here. We don't have much. Dropping my instability so I can sprint here. Gonna go down the hill. I'm pretty sure I went down the hill here. Just to get out of the. Because uh, I'm overheating. There's no point in firing, right? Might as well drop all my heat. Plus, hoping that that. Uh, oh, we go with a ping here too. Don't think we get anybody. I think everyone has zero evasion anyway. Trying to decide now. This guy's sorely out of position. Although I think I don't think we take a shot at. Yeah, we don't take a shot at the hunchback because I'd be firing through all my guys. And with the uh, Gauss rifle, it's severe back damage to somebody. So we just decided to go ahead with the fire the Thunderbolt four pack at one of these two guys. Or is it this guy? I think I fired at this guy, but it gets shot down again. Pretty sure it gets shot down. Yeah, laser AMS off Roger. the uh, thumper guy shoots it down again. Oh, zero for one. Sorry, maybe I missed it. Did I land that shot? Anyway, I thought it got shot down, but I guess it didn't. So now here's where our, our um, the joust is now getting ready to move forward. So we're getting both of our vehicles to the point now where we can get up beside and behind these guys. I think I move in here... I think I go with, I can't remember if I go with everything. 
I think I do. I think I switch up to HE and try and take a shot at the, uh... Let me try and take a shot at this guy. Because we have a fairly good chance to hit. Switching it to HE here. Trying to get some more damage through on him, I think. Yeah. Landed a few machine rounds. I just want to let this guy know that he's being flanked. I know it's just psychological. It's, it has absolutely no in-game effect. But I think the AI tries to determine its positioning based on where your mechs and stuff are. So if you bring guys down behind them um, and flank them, then they'll start to reconsider their positioning. Um, the match I played before this one uh, was for the Royals. I was trying to get some sea bills. I was just doing a general base defense mission. But the positioning that they used to attack the base, they had two lances at the start and they dropped two other lances. Um, and the positioning that they were using was really superior. Like what, like the, the tactics that they used, it was almost like I was playing a, a player. Like seriously, I, I felt like I was playing a player because of the way they were positioning their mechs, moving stuff around, right? I was outnumbered four to one. Um, but the way that they were positioned, I didn't kill all of them. I managed to pull off the mission only because they were focusing on turrets and they were missing a lot of their shots. Um, and I had good turrets too. I had a thumper and an arrow turret, or not arrow, um, thunderbolt turret with uh, um, the inferno rounds and stuff. So we had some good turrets, which really helped out. But anyway, we're taking a shot at this guy with some tandem. Got it. Once again, I was firing the tandem because I was hoping that because the uh, Artemis ones would probably just easily get shot down. Hoping that a few of them would go through and do some pen, maybe do some crits on them, but didn't happen. Moving the Holopolis up, once again, it's just for the uh, the AMS. I'm trying to position in a good position to keep everybody covered here. Also to take a shot. Now we got some shooting to do too, buddy. No shooting. shoot this guy. Good chances to hit. We leave the Artemis on because we're just we're targeting this guy here. I can't remember if they get shot down or not. Rogue but I gotta say, the, uh, the Rogue Tech AI uh, far better than vanilla. I've watched... Ma Sonic see, this guy one. doesn't get knocked over. This is so I fucking annoying. Maxed out his uh, instability. He still doesn't get knocked over. Becomes an issue later on. I'll, not in this episode, but later on I'll, you'll see. Yeah, gets another shot off and then falls over. Thumping, thumping, thumping. Knockdown. Can't take much more of this. I'm generating a lot of heat, Commander. He just gets up and fires and just literally right back on his ass again. I mean, I guess I can't backstrike him. That's the one bonus. Now we're trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the SM1 here with the Ultra 20. I know I want to shoot this Rackzilla guy. I want to try and take his head. I, was, I remember. I remember. It was like. I gotta get in here. I'm gonna go for the headshot, of course. Try and take his head clean off. It would be so enjoyable to just blow this guy's head right off right now. And that's what we do. We move in and try and go for the headshot here. On my way. It would be such a fitting end to this thing to lose its head by an Ultra 20. Because it's really, I mean, it's totally causing havoc. I crank up the machine guns hoping for a head hit here. And we'll see what we get. Dun dun dun! Nothing. We do get one head hit with the machine guns. This guy's resisting a lot of injuries, though. He's fallen over twice. He's taken two head hits. He's only taken two injuries, so he's doing a pretty good job of resisting them. Waiting for orders. Trying to figure out what to do with this guy now is, is difficult. At least it didn't get targeted last round. I'm worried about moving it up, because if I move it up like this, there's the opportunity for the, uh, the vulture to uh, get a shot at it, but I'm looking there. Looks like it's pretty clean. That hill's still in the way. The vulture's got a long way to go before it can get up the hill and get a shot at me, so I like, decided to move up. Plus, I'm in the trees. I'm like, okay, I got a little bit of protection. I'm trying to go for a knockdown on this guy or a kill. Taking a shot here. Landed a few rounds. Here we go. Enough for a knockdown. We'll take it. And I know there's those chances where you can fire at it and get just enough instability where it's not enough to knock him over. But that, but to me, that happens to me so frequently that there's got to be something going on. 
Maybe it has to do with the type of weapon that's hitting him. I don't know, but yeah, we're going after this guy over here. I'm going to go for the headshots. Our blaze fire is jammed at this point, though. I should have used well, Phantom Mech, but I forgot on. once again. Yeah, just going after his head, I think. It really is a smart choice. All we need is that one extra head hit. I, w I really wanted the Ultra 20 kill on this guy, but I'm just trying to figure out now where the Ultra 20s hit. Looks like it was torsos and arms. Him falling back, too. He hasn't taken a lot of back damage. I don't think he's taken any back damage. So when he falls over, he's been damaging his arm and his leg. Like right here, you can see he's taking no back damage. But he's been hitting his arm and his leg when he falls over. So we're going for a headshot here. Nothing. Detected, though. Blaze fire is unjammed. Commander. Who's this? Wolverine. Yeah, we got like no movement because we're so overheated right now, but not worried about the Wolverine. It runs so cool. All fire. I have to do is turn the large laser off and it drops all the heat. Watch this. Turn that off. Boom. We're fine. Try for a CT hit. Finish him off. Affirmative. Not today. Yep. Hoping that he was going to bail Morning, out because there was a pause ahead. there, but didn't happen. Griff's in the same situation. He's overheating terribly here. We've only got one hex of movement, so we're just going to move over to a bit to the side here. Keep our back to the wall. Got it. I think we just go with the. I think we go with the combat shotgun and the SRMs at this point because he doesn't have much left in his CT. I think we just decide to drop the heat. Try for the plank. Is this just the combat shotgun? Oh yeah, it was. Got Not it. enough. Not enough. He is panicking, though. Okay. This guy wants to have an exchange. We'll have an exchange. I'm just going to stand right here. And fuck you, buddy. We should. I'm just pl deciding whether it's going to drop all our instability. We don't have enough resolve to be able to do that. So I think I just click on him, and it's like, yep, our all of our uh, thing will drop. Wind the rack up. I think I switched this back to uh, acid. Yep. I should have switched the rotary down, though. So the acid hits first, but never thought of it until now. Exchange. There's the exchange. Good damage. I was saying too, the thing with the vulture is it's it can be deadly. It's got a lot of weapons and systems and stuff on it, but it's also got the ultra light gyro built into it, which means it has a very low stability threshold, meaning it's easy to knock on its ass. AMS saving me a little bit. Here. I don't know if it says. Oh, we didn't, we didn't hit any, so it doesn't save me at all. Just looks good. <laughs> That's why I put it on there. Actually, I don't, I don't even uh, fill the AMS with the AMS ammo. I just fill it with fireworks. So every time it goes off, it just shoots fireworks everywhere. On my way. Once again, this guy, I'm trying to decide what to do, and I'm like, I better finish him off. But I'm like, yeah, you know, I could fire the Thunderbolt. Yeah, marginal chance to hit. Most likely, it'll just be shot down. So I'm like, let's finish this guy off. But I gotta turn off the Thunderbolt and the Gauss Rifle. Because he's only got a few hit points in the CT. But if I don't turn the Gauss Rifle off and I miss, it's gonna go straight into the back of somebody, so... I can take the 36 damage from the large lasers, I can't take the 75 from the Gauss, so... Just drop him. Enemy down. Just down to two now. Alright, let's get you down here. Once again, I really want that Ultra 20 hit. Now I'm gonna be fidgeting around here. I'm trying to shift click my movement and it won't let me do it. I can't set a waypoint. No matter how hard I try here, using both sides shifts, using the alt key, I can't, I'm pretty sure it's shift click, but every time I would go to do it, it wouldn't let me set a waypoint. I think I even back out of the, uh, the pilot here in a second to see if resetting the selection of the pilot resets it. Cause I know I've done that in the past where I've gone, I like, I do that, reselect the pilot. And then I, I go shift click and it lets me do it, but this time it wouldn't let me do it. Because I wanted to move down the hill a bit, but I think I just settle for up on the hill. Yeah, I can't shift click. Which is really sucky. I think I settle on three or four chevrons of evasion and then... Or do I decide to go for the... Take the damage? I can't remember. I think I decide to take the damage and move down the hill. What did I do? No, I moved up on the hill. Pretty sure I moved up on the hill. Or do we sit still? I can't remember here.
Yeah, I take the three chevrons. That was right. Yeah, sitting still gave me 65% chance to hit. Moving gave me 60. I'm like, I'm willing to, to increase my chevrons so they don't get killed by the uh, the vulture. I'll go after this guy's head again because I do want to take his head clean off. And I plink his head with machine guns instead. And he's down. I mean, we wanted to, to, to kill him. And that was the best way to do it because we got, we got max salvage out of that, right? He's moving the archer up now. I think it's so damn slow. That's fine. Just targeting the vulture. I think we switch out of tandem to Artemis again. Or do we just fire tandems? Can't remember. Just the tandems. Just a matter of cleanup now. I still have to watch out for all those mines, right? I think if I was in a solo play, I might, I might, if I wanted to max the salvage off that guy, I would just back everybody off and see if he ran around enough in the mines to take his own legs off. But, once again, it's a series, the last thing you want to do is spend 25-30 minutes watching a mech run back and forth. I just move in and take shots at this guy. We're just trying to finish him off now. I don't even remember how we kill this guy now. I think it's got a... It might have a double XL engine in it, too. I can't remember if it has a double XL. I think I'm trying to burrow through one side here now. So I want to go with the blue lines, go for the side strikes. I mean, you get a better chance to hit from the side, too. Deciding whether I want to go with what and go for the more damage. with the Less chance to hit, but more damage. So, explosion was contained. Looks like it was a prototype double heatsink explosion. At first I thought it was ammo. Oh, it was ammo explosion. I don't think he has case though. Good to go. The leg was blown off. So I think it, it might have been like like safe ammo or something. So he's on his ass. We're just going to rain some fire down on him. So yeah, it was the leg that we took. So it was, the ammo was probably safe ammo, because you can't have case in the leg, right? So it was probably safe. Contain it to the leg. Firing on target. Pot shotting him here. Ammo explosion, pilot injured again. Critical hit, Commander. Taser face. I think we try for a torso. A torso kill on this guy. No, headshots? Okay. Good damage. Firing. I didn't even move because this guy's pretty much done at this Let's point, right? Yeah, I can't even remember who gets the kill here. It might be her. I think I move her up into the fire here. Confirmed. Yeah, because we're standing in lava here. I, I don't go for the heat, but we do. I leave. I put the remote sensors on, hoping that we get a head plank. We'll go. Granite doesn't move. I think we might. I, I don't know if Granite gets the kill with the uh, going for the headshot. Switching to what? In, yeah, incendiary. Because I didn't want to blow it up, right? I want to try to maximize. Roger. The salvage we get out of it. I was going for the head hit there. And we got one. And it bailed. That was right. Yeah, he bailed out. That's right. It's nice that the Talos got the kill, though. Alright, so that was the end of that. Uh, 745,000 or 765 we made. And I'm just checking the damage here. We had barely anything. You know, we walked out of that. Like I said, we outnumbered them 2 to 1. And in that fight, if we had a one-to-one -one fight, we still would have won. It would have been a tough win, but we would have won. But uh, if it was if it was one-to-one, -one, like if they had 12 and we had 11, that would have been a really good fight, I thought. Unfortunately, it ended up being what it was. That although the 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 Thumper Zilla or Thump Thumper Ela, um, definitely a nice spectacle for the last fight. And that thing, I mean, if it was capable of like not falling over. There should be modifiers that you can get that, like that maybe like there's like there should have like braces that you can actually apply, so that it deploys leg leg braces, so that it like if it 
spends its movement turn deploying leg braces, braces, then it can't be knocked over by those artillery rounds. And then it has to spend a round retracting the leg braces so that it can start moving again. So you can reposition it. But that might be an interesting way to do an assault mech, you know? And then I gotta decide here what I'm gonna choose piecewise. I wish I had hovered over the Annihilator to find out what pieces, like what it actually had, like internals and stuff. But I didn't do that, unfortunately. I'm just kind of checking to see what we have pieces of. Now, I, at first I didn't realize, like, I mean, I'm still whole new to, the, I'm new to this kind of storage thing on the side. So I'm just clicking medium to see if we have Ifrit pieces. I'm trying to decide, like, if we have 40 ton Ifrit pieces, not realizing that if any, if we, if we had any pieces of that, um, it would show up there if I could actually merge them together into one Mac. And I think I check here with the, for the Hunchback here in a second, just showing that we have a Wolverine X that we could throw together. Um, we slow, but we got a bunch of stuff. These guys did pretty well for gear. I think I clicked on the hunchback here and it's like, yeah, all the variants show up that I can merge with that one. So I don't have a, any free pieces, so I wouldn't bother taking the free now. There's no point. I don't have any, any annihilator pieces either, so there's no point in taking that. So, and then when there's not enough, like once I, once again, that's like five pieces. I think the next time we, the next series we do, I think I'm going to make sure we keep it at three. That way we can gain max and whether or not we decide to put them together is up to us. Like I can, I can... I'll, I'll take the three mech parts and then leave it in storage and then assemble it later and we'll put it together so we'll have it rather than constantly trying to fish around to see if we can get something, you know? And at this point, I'm just trying to decide what the best best grab is. I think if, I think, I think I decided, I can't remember what I decided to grab here. XLs would be good for C-bills. Double plus exchanger is a beautiful grab right there. I think I grabbed this fire control system PPC, which is pretty cool because it's got plus one accuracy for PPCs, minus one recoil, minus 5% heat generated for PPCs. So that's something that you would use if you were putting together a Marauder with a pair of ER PPCs, minus 50% PPC minimum range. It's really, really cool. And I can't remember, I'm, oh yeah, I was discussing about the Radical Prototype Double Heatsink Kit. So there's, I think there's three versions. These two here, the pirate version gives you a better heat threshold when it's active and more heat reduction. And the regular radical one is less heat reduction and less of a threshold. Just trying to figure it out. But I know there's one, there's a prototype double heatsink kit that you don't have to activate. These ones get activated automatically when you reach a certain heat point and then it drops your heat, right? by what 30 or 20 or whatever the prototype heatsink kit is. But I think there's another one that's always active that doesn't give you that heat drop. It's just it's a, just a flat rating. And you can use double double uh, prototype double heat sinks with it. I'm pretty sure there's another one that's just like uh, just a flat out rating, which is the one I would prefer because I have, you know me, I have problems turning shit on and off. Oh yeah, I grabbed the turret mount here, I think. Now, the turret mount here says that you can put it in any location. Maybe mounted in any location to increase accuracy, but that's not true. It can only be mounted in torsos or the head, right? Center, left, right, or head. You can't put it in arms or legs. I think I grab it and test it out here. Because I was when I read that, I was like, it can't be put in any location. And I remember when we had our Vulture before, I think I had a turret mount in the chin. And I had an Ultra 5 in there, I think. I can't, or maybe it wasn't an Ultra 5. It was something. We had something mounted in the chin that we were using the turret mount for. And I remember it being a big weapon because well, I wanted the plus two accuracy so I threw the, threw the turret mount in. It may have been an Ultra 5. I can't remember off the top of my head. But the Vulture we had uh, like several series ago was just brutal. It was like just an amazing mech. Except for the fact that you could knock it over easy. I think here I'm just saying too that I think if I was just playing an offline play I might take the MRM Slug and the MRM Improved. Because with an even with an MRM thirty tube, like 30, 30 tubes of MRMs, if you figure in how much instability that is, it's actually a fair bit because it doubles your instability damage. I think I checked the instability damage on the MRMs later on, but I think it's like, I think it's three per missile, 
or it might be two per missile, but even then it doubles it, right? So you're doing a shit ton of instability damage with with the slug. And if you're launching 30 tubes, it's a lot of damage. Anyway, we pick up three MRM tens off of this, and one of the one of the uh, the uh, Mark II parts. Reactive plating, turret mount. I keep the AC-28 P ammo. Not that it matters because this series is over now anyway. But I would generally keep it. And there's our there's our uh, cost, 61,000. So it's actually not that bad. Most of the damage was done by the Thumper Zilla. A little bit of damage was done by the uh, the Vulture, but I think we go into the Mech Bay. I think I check out the turret mount now. We go into the Orion here. Welcome to the grease pit, Commander. The uh, the out of stock Orion, the one that doesn't have anything in it, just to check it out. So the turret mount's great. Like if you're running like a heavy Goss or something, which we have, we have the both heavy heavy Goss versions. So you can't put it in the arm, right? But you can definitely put it in either the torsos or the head, as it shows there, right? You can drop it anywhere. Now the head, you I mean, you'd obviously need to have the um, better life support, and you need and you'd want to have like an ultralight gyro or something in there, um, or even just leaving it like that. A, t a two slot weapon in there, like is like an ER PPC. Um, if you have more slots in the center torso for more weapons, you could use it. But putting it in the, tor the torso like that, there's plenty of room, even for like an XL engine. I think I double check the. Uh, yeah, I got. I got to remove that one first. It doesn't swap it out. So the improved heavy goss or the heavy goss is the same, I think, technically. Uh, in relations of slots, and if you put a Clan XL engine in it, you've got enough slots to put it in there. So giving a plus two to hit to that thing is nice for that turret mount. And then we know better targeting computers and then add a ballistic accuracy um, thing and then make sure you don't move. So your armor, you may want to think about putting like um, like reactive plating or some kind of armor on it that's going to reduce your damage because you're most likely going to be standing in trees to reduce your incoming damage because you're not going to be moving while you're firing this thing, right? Gives you a 25% chance to get knocked over. So the last thing you want to do is like walk and take a shot with it. Even the sniper is the same. I think the sniper's yeah, it's a 40% chance for a knockdown. I was just checking to see if I had any thumpers because I wanted to see what the percentage chance was. It's probably 25% for the thumper or 20. Either one though with four of them going off at the same time because it stacks, right? Four of them going off at the same time is very, very dangerous. So you'll want to be standing completely still when you fire them. I think the Thumper Zilla's problem was that, like, when it got up, the, when it moved the first time and it fired all of them, it was fine. But then the next turn it moved again and fired and fell over. Then he stood up and fired and fell over, stood up and fired and fell over. It, did, it didn't matter, right? So, four of them is kind of cool, but it doesn't take into play this new mechanic. So, you could probably get away with a pair of them. Or, actually, I think the Howitzers. Yeah, I think I looked at the howitzer because the howitzer doesn't give you that, right? You can move with the howitzer and fire. So you're better off putting four howitzers in. Because the sniper, the sniper damage is twice that of the howitzer. Right? And it's twice the weight of the howitzer. And it's the same range. Right? You can see it's the same range. It's still got a minimum issue. The sniper's got indirect fire capability, I think. But minus six accuracy. But if you look down... I think it says it evo ev 15 evasion pips ignored, right? And that's because when it when it splash damages, you just doesn't matter how fast you're moving, how much evasion you have, you're still getting hit by shrapnel, right? That's the only reason why. So it removes your evasion, but then adds a big minus to hit, so that you're not necessarily going to hit something head on. Whereas this thing here doesn't do that. So the howitzer might be a better bet. Because it'll allow you to move and fire, as opposed to the sniper where you got to kind of be standing still. Sniper, like I, does, like I said, does more damage and has a better chance to do splash damage and everything. But if you can mount two howitzers, it might be better off. But you'd still need to have like an indirect, you know, fire control system or something, something to give you better indirect capability. Anyways, that's where I end the episode. Um, yeah, so that's the end of uh, inheritance. Um, not as big of a bang as I thought it was going to be for the uh, for the mission, but you know, uh, it is what it is. Um, anyway, um, so I'm going to end this series here. Now look forward to the Royals and the Duelist. I've recorded them both. I'll be posting them both. Probably I'll probably go back to back on these. 
um, in days wise when I release them. Uh, but I'm going to edit them all at the same time and get them posted. So you get a chance to see the end of those three. Now, the next series that I do, I'm not 100% sure what that's going to be just yet. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards, like when I was talking about it in the three different episodes, trying to figure out what to do. I think I'm going to lean towards more choosing like, I don't want to choose like the Rusty Dan start again, but I might choose like the Sakinis Federation or Torian Concordat or Magistracy of Canopus, somebody on the periphery in the south, and then do a trek across the inner sphere. Um, but I am open to different um, to different suggestions, and I think I'm planning on doing the future tech. So right now, I'm what I've got installed is 3068. So it's like the uh, the um, uh, the Word of Blake uh, sort of time period. So I think what I'm going to do is when I install it next time, I'm going to go right to maximum. So 30. 3160 I think it is or 3150 or whatever so it's like almost 100 years past where we're at now um, just so that there's more tech more because it's just a lot of content that I haven't seen yet that I kind of want to see, see and check out and maybe we start off with like in periphery space that'll give us a chance to accumulate a lot of the new tech integrate it into our mechs find out what we like and what we don't like things like that but I don't want to start off with with a lot of good stuff. I want to kind of build up and just kind of pick and choose what we get. So I'll probably kind of go go that road again, start off a little slower. Uh, we'll choose three mech parts just so that we can accumulate some mechs, build them up in storage, and then when we're ready to put them together, we'll do that and it kind of advance that way. But I do like the idea of maxing out mechs as we get them. Obviously, if we don't have a lot of hard points, I'll probably cycle those mechs out quick and then get more mechs in roughly the same way with better hard points and stuff. But... We'll just see how it goes, but that's my thought. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Um, I'll probably put up a couple of polls just to ask some questions. Uh, I'm not going to install the nuclear weapon carriers or any of that kind of stuff, but I will probably install super heavies um, just so we have some end game content to make our way towards. Because uh, I do want to engage some super heavy mechs. That would kind of be cool. And hopefully they don't have another save save game breaking update I'm only going to go with one series I'm not going to go with multiples like I'm doing now um, it's not so much I mean keeping track of single series is a lot easier than, than uh, keeping track of multiple series for sure um, you get you get to see a variety of mechs and, and things with multiple series that you can't just do in one which I like too because it kind of varies the gameplay each one's a little different you get a little different taste of the different flavors of what you can and can't do whereas if you're playing a single series you're only limited to what you can get you know, and there's still a wide range of stuff that you're probably not even going to experience. So I, I like to get that kind of flavor going, but definitely going to stay with the nuclear weapon carriers. Um, as much as it sounds interesting, the last thing I want to do is like have like a, a weapons carrier go off like on turn one and wipe out our lance before we even start. And then it's like, you know, we got to spend like another 20 episodes acquiring gear to rebuild ourselves. And as interesting as that sounds in an offline play, for me in an online play, that's like, you know, not the ultimate. Like Now, if we get blasted really hard by something and we lose half our mechs, like we did, you know, early in this series where we took some significant damage early on, we were able to rebuild ourselves. I'm okay with that. But getting wiped out in one shot without a fight is like, eh, I'm not really interested in that for a series. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway, um going to end this episode here uh sorry i didn't get a chance to to uh you, you didn't get a chance to hear the recorded audio but at least i would give you a talk through to on what happened um so this is the end of inheritance i hope you enjoyed it if you did drop a like if you haven't subscribed please feel free to subscribe and please drop your comments in the comment section down below i do read all of them until next time we'll see you later